small amounts of persistent chemicals like DDT can enter the aquatic system and be taken up by tiny phytoplankton which when eaten by small fish gets stored in the fatty tissues of the fish and is never eliminated but its concentration continues to rise in the body tissues of this primary consumer. Eventually the small fish would have bioaccumulated a significant amount of DDT in its short life. Most often that life ends when it's consumed by a secondary consumer, a bigger fish. The bigger fish eats several small fish during its lifetime and when it digests those fish the DDT is not eliminated but continues to build up in the body tissues of the secondary consumer. Eventually a bigger fish might be caught by a tertiary consumer like this double crested cormorant upon digesting its meal the cormorant accumulates large amounts of DDT in its body collecting the high concentrations that have been building ever since the phytoplankton were taken up by the primary consumers when the cormorant lays its eggs the eggs too are affected by a byproduct of DDT and this leads to a weakening of the eggshell and therefore presents a great threat to the survival of this species. This mechanism became well understood in the 1960s and the 1970s and much of the awareness is owed to Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. Were it not for the publishing of Silent Spring and for the awareness it brought other species like the brown pelican which thrives today and of course the iconic bald eagle a symbol of the great nation of the United States these species may not be with us biomagnification targets the top level consumers collecting all of the DDT and all of the harmful chemicals from the lower trophic levels and allowing it to magnify itself as it travels up the food chain and unlike other kinds of matter and energy there is no dissipation at each level but all of the DDT from the lower levels gets channeled like a funnel all the way up to the top level consumer.